Hello, today is the 26th of August 2022 and I'm making this video for you to analyze the possible effects of certain important transits around the zodiac and their repercussions on your sun sign or zodiac sign. If you're watching this video it's probably because you were born under this sign. This is this one here, Libra. Libra is the seventh sign of the zodiac. So what is going to happen in 2023 is quite important because major planets are going to change signs and when they do their influence on your sign is going to uh, radically change very suddenly for some of them and uh, in a different manner for others. So let's have a look at the um, first one I would like to talk to you about. I've already talked to you about this one in last year's video that I made about 2022. It is about Jupiter because Jupiter, you see, has been transiting in Aries since May 2022. So it is now retrograding towards Pisces where it will re-enter uh, at the end of October this year. If you want to find out more about what I've said about, uh, according to this transit uh, in relation to your sign, just watch the video that I made last year about Libra in 2022. But Jupiter is going to come back in Aries and it will come back on the 20th of December this year 2022 and the transit is going to last until May 16 or 16th May 2023. So while it is in Aries for the second time it's going to probably amplify or perhaps officialize something that has been happening in 2022. And of course the influence is going to be very strong because Aries is the sign that is across from yours. Yours is the first sign from which we begin the uh, reading and then there are the other signs around the zodiac which are of course each one counted uh, by a number and this one here, Aries, is the seventh one. Just like yours is the seventh one from the first sign, which is, uh, according to the zodiac, it is Aries. But in this reading, your sign is the first one because it is the one we're talking about. Now, because it is a cross from your sign, there is between the two what we call an opposition. So, Aries is opposite Libra and that means that Libra is more or less the alter ego for Aries and of course Aries is or would be Libra's alter ego as well. In this manner it means that because it is the seventh sign from yours it is linked to the seventh house representing personal relationship, partnerships, collaboration, anything that has something to do with activities that are linked to other people, other person, one or more, but usually house number seven represents marriage life, so your partner or partnership. And Jupiter may have allowed you to uh, officialize a relationship, for example, or officialize a partnership, or get involved in a relationship, a partnership, or an activity with other people. Uh, that notion of collaboration has been amplified and increased by Jupiter, because that is Jupiter's function, to increase whatever Jupiter um, effects around the chart. So that's quite interesting because it will have an influence from December 
2020, from about the 20th of December 2020 until the 16th of May. That means that what you've done in 2022 about getting involved in a relationship and so on and so forth may become even more important from December 20th until uh, May 16th, 2023. And that will, of course, then have an influence for a much longer time. Because what you're going to get involved in, or what you have got involved in, will most certainly perdure much longer than the uh, duration of this uh, transit. The uh, time that Jupiter takes to revolve around the zodiac is 12 years. So that means that perhaps what happens and what will happen during the uh, transit of Jupiter in this sign will have repercussions, consequences for about 12 years until the next time Jupiter transits in Aries. So it must be, uh, of course, taken into consideration because what you want to achieve for yourself but in accordance to someone else, uh, will become a source of very strong motivation and, of course, a source of evolution as well, because that is what Jupiter represents. And then Jupiter is going to transit in Taurus. That is going to last for a year, until May 2024. End of May, I think it will... I think it is the 26th of May, but I'm not sure. Uh, so Jupiter in Taurus is going to have a different influence because Taurus is the eighth sign from yours, see, number eight. So it is naturally or symbolically linked to house number eight, representing your, would say, your financial status, what you own, and what you perhaps share with others financially and otherwise as well, because house eight also represents the, uh, the interest that you may have in the mysteries of life, the questions you know, that we ask ourselves from time to time, where do we come from, where do we go, and so on and so forth. So that is going to be amplified as well. And sexuality is represented by house number eight too. Money, Investments will be emphasized during this period of one year. Maybe it represents a period during which you will get an inheritance, for example, or somehow money is going to become more important and potentially a source of positive results. Potentially. That means that you will have of course, to act in accordance with what you want to achieve or in accordance with the situation in order to preserve your own interests and also perhaps the interests of the other person if someone else is involved. Because it is possible house number eight represents your relationship and financial relationship or material relationship with others. It could be the bank. If you want to uh, get a loan to buy a house, for example, or, or a, a real estate or something else, you'll have to see the bank for a loan. That is also represented by house number eight. And if you need to do so, perhaps this period when Jupiter transits in Taurus will be beneficial to you. But you will have to act, as I said earlier. And you see between Taurus and your sign, there is what we call an inconjunct. And that aspect in astrology represents the tendency that we all have at times to postpone, you know, uh, to hesitate and perhaps not to take advantage of what may come forward because we are not sure of the consequences and the results that we're going to have. Nothing is guaranteed 100%. And that's perhaps why you will be hesitating. And if you do so, you may perhaps not take advantage of some very positive um, and perhaps extraordinary, unique opportunities to uh, 
increase your material or financial situation, improve it, I mean, uh, because that may become the source of a extraordinary change. The reason is that in Taurus, since 2018, Uranus is transiting. Uranus is a planet that takes 84 years to revolve around the zodiac. Therefore, it means that this conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus is a unique event. It's never going to happen again during your lifetime because you'd have to wait 84 years for it, for it to happen again. Now, Uranus represents change, drastic, radical, and long-lasting changes. Actually, what Uranus changes cannot be changed to what it was before. So, opportunity is represented by Jupiter, and Jupiter also represents in, uh, evolution, progress, success, and Uranus represents change. And it is probably what you want to achieve, a drastic, radical, positive change in your life, since Uranus is in Taurus since 2018 and the transit is going to last until 2025-2026 but Jupiter is only going to remain in Taurus until May 2024. That's the difference because if this event never occurred before in your life it means that you uh, will benefit from something extraordinary and you should get ready for it and if it's something that you've been expecting, wanting, uh, hoping for since 2018 uh, most likely it will come or become something real in 2023 or perhaps 2024 because as I said Jupiter will remain in Taurus until 2024. So that's very important to keep that in mind because that in conjunct here is something that could hold you from really being uh, spontaneous enough to benefit from this opportunity, major, unique opportunity to transform your life radically and forever. Forever because the transit is never going to occur again, as I said earlier, during your lifetime. And there is another one that's quite interesting as well and that you should take into consideration because it's going to have an influence not only on your personal life and on your perhaps physical life as well, but as well on your destiny and the way you deal with the idea of being alive and progressing during that lifetime. And the planet is Pluto. Pluto is the last planet known uh, around the uh, solar system. It takes 248 years to revolve around the zodiac. At the moment, Pluto is in Capricorn. And Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Now, as you can see, Capricorn is the fourth sign from your sign. So it is symbolically linked to house number four. And house number four represents family, home, environment, place of residence. I would say that since 2008, when Pluto began, its transit in Capricorn, your family life, or perhaps your place of residence as well, your home, has undergone a lot of transformation, changes, drastic, profound changes. Uh, but now that Pluto is changing sign, instead of being in discordance with your sign, because between Capricorn and Libra there is 
what we call a discordance uh, between the elements, actually, air and earth. What happens is that Pluto, during its very long transit, the transit is going to last for about 15 years when it ends in 2024, because that entry of Pluto in uh, Aquarius, it's only in 2023, is only going to last for about three months. From the 23rd of March until the 11th of June, 2023. Uh, and then Pluto will re-enter in Capricorn until January 2024, and then it will re-enter again in Capricorn until November 24. And then it's going to settle in Aquarius for about 20 years. So the long transit of Pluto in Capricorn has put a lot of pressure on you, uh, perhaps physically, psychologically, in many ways. It had to do and probably affected your family life, your home environment, or perhaps your place of residence as well. But that's going to end. And that's the good thing about transits. Even though some of them last for a long time, one day or other, they're going to pass and become uh, a different type of influence. And this one here, when Pluto transits in uh, Aquarius, is going to become extremely positive. Because Pluto represents your ability to regenerate, your ability to, uh, to stand for what you want, and to be really resilient, resistant, in order to attain your goals and to achieve what you want to achieve in life. And Pluto is going, and Pluto is going to transit the fifth sign from your sign. Fifth sign, fifth house. The fifth house represents the joys of life. Love, uh, friendship as well somehow, um, and the good things of life in general. That is what you can enjoy on a daily basis. Holidays, luck as well is represented by house number five, children, people you love in general and so on. So the transit of Pluto in Aquarius in your fifth house according to your sun sign and not according to your chart perhaps and if you want more information about your own birth chart which is much more complicated than just looking at your sign don't hesitate to visit our website and you will find the information to uh, order a reading or to ask a simple question. So for 20 years Pluto will actually have that positive influence that will allow you, for example, if you fall to get up again, if you get ill to um, somehow heal yourself and recover your good health. So it's very protective. It seems that whatever happens, of course, something drastic and dramatic, if that happens, it, it becomes very different. But Pluto will eventually, in any case, help you regenerate and restore whatever has been destroyed or broken or whatever in your life. That is extremely important. And it's going to increase your own potential to create, to procreate perhaps as well, and to enjoy the good things of life. But not just like that as a child would, but in a very profound manner. Because Pluto represents that potential to uh, do and uh, enjoy and appreciate life in a very deep, profound manner. There is something karmic about this transit, but it is positive.
positive karma that is coming to you. So prepare yourself because what you're going to do because between the 23rd of March and the 11th of June 2023 it will have um, a very strong influence on what happens next after when Pluto really settles in um, Aquarius from November 2024 onwards and for about 20 years. That's an extremely long time and that time is going to be uh, positive for you. Of course there will be other transits from time to time that may disrupt, disrupt the uh, um, positive influence of Pluto. But basically I would say that Pluto will remain your friend for 20 years. Now there are other planets I want to talk to you about and another planet will change sign as well. So we've seen that Pluto is going to change sign. Now let's talk about Saturn. Saturn will change sign too. It will go from Aquarius to Pisces and that will happen on the 7th of March 2023. Now Saturn has been transiting in Aquarius since 2020, since March 2020 and more definitely since December 2020. The transit is going to last until the 7th of March 2023. While Saturn is in Aquarius, it forms, just like I've said about Pluto in Aquarius, it forms a very positive link with your sign, which we call a trine. So Saturn has helped you during this two and a half years to sustain the necessary efforts to obtain what you wanted to obtain. Even though the period, the situation was not necessarily very easy, you probably had sufficient strength and um, sustained will to obtain what you wanted to obtain, to do what needed to be done. The efforts, the work and so on. That's what Saturn represents. And what you've done during those two and a half years is far from being lost. When Saturn changes sign and begins to transit in uh, Pisces, of course its influence is going to change. But in Pisces there is Neptune. Yes, Neptune has been here in Pisces since 2012. It's a very slow planet too. It takes 165 years to revolve around the zodiac. So Neptune is going to remain in, in Pisces until 2025, 2026. So it is a long transit. And while it is in Pisces, it affects your sixth sign from your sign. House number six. House six represents work and health. So I would say that since Neptune is in Pisces, it has increased uh, perhaps the confusion because that's also what Neptune represents. In this area, health, work, it probably affected you career-wise, work-wise in any case. But it also represents your dreams. Uh, and the ideal situation that you would like to reach. Now, what is it that you would like to reach? Uh, your answer is of course represented by Neptune because Neptune represent, does not represent what is 100% what is sure. So if it represents your dreams, your dreams by themselves are not going to bring you anything else than personal satisfaction somehow but also with a potential to be disappointed because dreams do not come true just like that. 
unless you're very lucky, which is not everybody's lot, you know. So Saturn is the one that can help you because it represents, as I said earlier, what you can do, the effort and the work that you can put into what you want to attain. So Saturn is naturally going to become um, the essential part of Neptune's uh, ability to feed your dreams and your desire to reach that ideal situation. And Saturn is going to remain two and a half years in this sign. So it may take two and a half years for you to really concretize what you've been dreaming to achieve for a long time, since 2012 perhaps. But the fact that Saturn is, and Neptune are transiting in Pisces creates once again, just like it was the case with Taurus, create what we call an inconjunct. And of course the inconjunct represents that tendency that we all have at times to postpone and you know not to do things the day or the moment they should be done. We wait. We think that we've got time. And time is represented by Saturn. So you will have to really take that into consideration because otherwise when Saturn transits in Pisces from the 7th of March onwards, you may feel the pressure of responsibilities that may appear too too heavy for you to carry. Therefore you won't do anything, you will wait and you may be waiting for two and a half years and nothing will happen and when Neptune and Saturn change sign almost together to transit in Aries, the opportunities to change, to rather than change, to attain that summit, that goal, that ideal situation, will never come back again in the same manner anyway. Because Neptune takes 165 years to revolve around the zodiac. That's all there is to it. And for those two planets to meet together again in this sign, well, you'd have to wait for maybe a couple of centuries. So that's it. Keep that in mind. It will probably motivate you to do what needs to be done so that you don't miss out. There is a beautiful opportunity. We've seen that with Jupiter and Uranus to change and to improve your life in a magical sort of way. But if you don't do anything to obtain that positive results that you want, then of course, perhaps you will get something, but it would be much less than what you will get if you decide that you will work for that and that you will achieve your goal and reach that ideal situation represented by Neptune. And then I'd like to talk to you about um, Karen. A few words about Karen because I've already talked about Karen uh, last year of course. Karen is in Aries since 2018. And the transit is going to last eight years, so until 2026. But what made Karen, which is here at the moment, uh, more important in 2022, and what will make it more important again from 20th of December 2022 until the 16th of May 2023, is the fact that Jupiter is transiting. And Jupiter transiting in Aries uh, amplifies, increases the energy of Karen. And Karen represents 
health. So is there something or someone around you who needs help or care, attention, uh, because of this person's health situation of your own health as well. It is a period during which looking at what is necessary to do to remain in good health or to restore good health is going to be amplified and most probably that is also indicating a potential to obtain better results. If, once again, you are prepared to um, recognize the opportunities and the best way to act and react in order to obtain what you want to obtain. Because that could also indicate, that transit could also indicate, not perhaps that your partner, for example, is having a, a health problem, healthy issue, but that your relationship is in that situation. Your relationship may be ill and Jupiter and Karen together, that's the doctor and the team that are going to help you. So of course there are only planets but their influence is very strong and Jupiter will help you see things in a much bigger way than perhaps what you've been able to a couple of years ago when Jupiter was not in Aries. So uh, the uh, transit of Jupiter in Aries will increase the influence of Charon. Charon is your inner doctor more or less. So it represents your opportunity to cure yourself from any ailments that you may suffer from or to cure your relationship or another type of relationship from any ailment that this relationship could suffer from. Now, let's talk about Mars. Now, Mars is a faster object. It takes only two years to revolve around the zodiac. That's nothing compared to the other planets I just talked about. Now, Mars is in Gemini at the moment. It's been in Gemini since the 20th of August, 2022. Usually Mars takes six weeks to transit through a sign. But in Gemini, this year, and a part of next year, it's going to take seven months and four days to transit the same sign. The transit is going to last until the 25th of March, 2023. So, Gemini is an air sign, just like yours. Therefore, in Gemini, Mars has a positive influence on your own personal energy, physically or physiologically and psychologically as well. So, that is what we call a trine. And as you can see, Gemini is the ninth sign from your sign. So it is symbolically linked to the ninth house. And house nine represents everything that is official in life. Your relationship with life on a, on a uh, philosophical point of view. It also represents your connection, your eventual connection with far distant places, foreign countries, foreign people, friends and so on. That is going to be amplified during the period when Mars transits in Gemini. You will find that you have more drive, more willpower, more speed as well, that you can decide quicker and for the better as well. So it is going to have a positive influence in your relationship as well because, because, because Mars represents Aries. And Aries, as we've seen earlier, is the seventh sign from your sign. Therefore, it is symbolically linked to the seventh house representing the other person in your life, partnership, relationship, uh, you know, collaboration and so on. 
So it is probably a period when collaborating with someone or getting involved in a collaboration or in a partnership in an official manner is likely to become a source of personal satisfaction but also motivation, incentive to do more and to get more from what you do together with someone else. It could be one person, it could be more, of course. The number is not indicated here. But according to your personal chart, once again, the influence may be a little bit different. It may even be stronger, if you want to know more about that, because that is a long transit. Don't hesitate to visit our website once again and you know ask a simple question or uh, order a reading. Then Mars is going to transit in Cancer and its influence is going to change because Cancer is a water sign. The transit is going to last until the 20th of May. Mars in Cancer. Cancer is a water sign as I said and as you probably know mixing water and air doesn't give much of a result. So there is what we call a discordance between both signs or at least both elements although of course there is water in air and air in water. Well, everybody knows that. The fact is that when Mars transit this area of your uh, of the uh, zodiac it will be in the tenth side from your side relating to house 10 or the mid heaven as we call it as well representing your status, your social status, your professional status, your career, your relationship with authority and um, your own ambitions and, and projects, important projects. So you are going to become quite ambitious during this period but it may create some tension with the other person or other people you may be uh, associated to or in relation with or collaborating with. So that's may it is a period in which you should make an effort to perhaps be less impatient and uh, give time more credit so that taking your time you will achieve better results and it will not have the disrupting influence on any relationship that you may have and that you may be involved in in and about your uh, social professional situation. If you do that then of course you will be much more uh, favored by the energy of Mars than the contrary. Otherwise you become impatient, you make mistakes, you get in trouble with the other person or other people and that has a disrupting, of course, a, a dissatisfying influence in your life that you can avoid if you are uh, now, you know that this period is going to be like that. Take note of the dates, 25th of March, 2023 until the 20th of May. Just try and take it easy and everything should be fine. After that, Mars will transit a sign that is in harmony with yours. So the influence, the energy is going to be different, be more easy, I would say, to handle and to uh, take advantage of. That will last until the 10th of July. Mars in Leo. Leo is a fire sign. Fire and air need one another to be. So there is what we call a positive harmonious link with your sign. The link is called a sextile actually in astrology. So we are here in the 11th sign from your sign. How's 11? 
represents friendship, represents your social surrounding, uh, human and geographical surrounding as well. So it's very interesting because in this area it indicates that Mars will amplify your perhaps your um, collaboration with the community to which you belong, your social community, your social surrounding, friends, acquaintances, and perhaps much more than that. But there is a, a notion of partnership, because as I said earlier, Mars represents your seventh sign from yours, seventh house, the other person in your life, and whatever has to do with partnership and relationship. So there will probably be the need to collaborate with someone, one person or more, to obtain better results. And that is that relationship that is going to have that positive influence on you uh, to make you more determined and probably much more efficient at dealing with issues and anything that will need to be dealt with uh, socially uh, and uh, humanly as well and perhaps geographically as well because that can indicate also a period in which you may decide to do something about your environment. And then Mars is going to transit in Virgo. The transit in Virgo will last until the 27th of August. As you can see, Virgo is the sign that precedes yours. So it is the 12th sign from your sign. House 12 represents the past. So that means that perhaps the past is going to become a source of strong motivation during this period from the 10th of July until the 27th of August. Seeing people that you haven't seen for a long time, for example. The other person in your life represented by Mars may become also a source of important uh, influence as far as the past in co is concerned. Somehow, this period is also representing um, what you should do to prepare yourself for the transit of Mars in your sign, which is going to begin on the 27th of August until the 12th of October, Mars will transit your sign. When it does, it will transform you a little because, as I said earlier, Aries would represent your alter ego. So your alter ego represented by Aries is also represented by Mars. And your alter ego could be the other person in your life, but it could be yourself as well. So somehow it means that either the other person in your life is going to have a very strong influence to motivate you in moving forward and doing things, acting, reacting, working, whatever. But it could also come for yourself. Suddenly you become more of an Aries than a Libra. And that gives you a lot of strength, renewed strength and desire, need, motivation and incentive to, to act and react, to defend yourself, to combat as well, to impose yourself in the areas that are most important to you. But at the same time, you would need to be a little bit careful because Mars could influence you to go too fast for your own good. And then you would put yourself in situations that may be a little bit risky. Incidents, diplomatic inf incidents, like, you know, getting cross with someone, and arguments and some conflicts. Breakups as well, why not? Uh, and also accidents. As you know, accidents do happen. And when they happen, they happen very suddenly. And Mars represents speed. It represents a, a kind of violence as well. So you need to be careful during the six weeks when Mars transits your sign. But of course, it may be different from one person 
born under a sign Libra than other people other people so everyone is different if you want to find out more about this transit now or later in 2023 visit our website and you will find the information to ask a question or to order a more in-depth reading then Mars will transit in Scorpio and that is going to last until the 24th of, of November Mars in Scorpio transits the second sign after yours because Scorpio is the next one second sign second house house 2 represents your relationship with life money wise that is what you earn and what you spend to feed yourself and you know to pay for your current bills on a day-to-day -day basis um, mass transiting in there will amplify your need to actually fight for what you feel you deserve financially so that could make you more efficient for example if you want more money from the work you do ask your boss or get you know somehow get a rise that's what actually this transit could allow you to obtain but of course Mars also represents your tendency to uh, be a little too strong about what you want a bit too impatient as well and money-wise that can indicate a period during which you could spend impulsively and get then a little worried about your budget if that's the case you may find it difficult then to um, adjust to that spending overspending creates problems so just remember that and during this period try to you know be more reasonable about what you spend and everything should be fine then Mars will transit to end the year it will transit in Sagittarius until the 4th of January 2024 Mars here in Sagittarius it is a fire sign so it's a good sign for you because fire and air do mix together quite well now there is what we call a sextile just like the one with Leo here we are in house 3 or the third sign from your sign is symbolically linked to house 3 communication it is a time of the year when communication is made a lot stronger of course because Christmas New Year all the festivities are um, an opportunity to, communi to communicate more to do more to be in relationship with other people and perhaps to also act in accordance to with a uh, personal relationship represented by Mars as I said earlier so the other person in your life or a type of partnership or relationship will also have a strong influence on your ability to communicate on your need to communicate and to use your potential intellect to uh, obtain more from your life during this period because of the uh, sextile as I said earlier your personal energy will be emphasized increased in a in a in a good way so you could find that the end of the year 2023 is a period of personal satisfaction but also common satisfaction because if Mars represents the other person or other people in your life it will be a common satisfaction altogether you will obtain more results more positive results than if you act 
on your own and decide to do it alone. If you go it alone, then you will get probably some good results, but they will be much less interesting and rewarding than if you collaborate with someone else. One or more people, of course. Uh, to end this reading, I'd like to uh, mention the transit of Venus in your sign. Because every year, Venus transits your sign, and every time it does, it lasts for about three weeks, it has a very strong and positive influence on your charisma, on your charm, on your ability to uh, take advantage of opportunities and uh, of life. I mean, Venus is love, so if you want to declare your feelings to someone you love, it would be a good period to choose. And also, if you have uh, a sensitive sort of uh, um, favor to ask someone, um, then it's also a period during which you, you could obtain satisfaction. And it's more especially the moment when Venus enters the sign that is the strongest. And what you then do at that moment, on that moment, may bring you positive results before the end of the transit of Venus in your sign. So Venus is going to transit your sign from the uh, 8th of November 2023, of course, until the uh, 4th of December. That's Venus, love. Love and the good things of life will be much more easily accessible, obtainable for you during this period. You will be more creative. Creation, procreation are also represented by Venus. Remember that. And anything that is good, nice uh, food, for example, and sharing the good things of life with other people, that's also represented by uh, Venus. So, remember the dates, 8th of November, 4th of December. Take note in your diary. That can be very useful because Venus is luck and luck may strike around the 8th of November in your life. If you are prepared for it, jump at it and you will be rewarded. Before I end this video, I would like to remind you about three things, three books actually. The first one is the book that I wrote to uh, help people who want to learn astrology to get quick and efficient results. The book is linked to 16 videos. There are 16 lessons in this book linked to 16 videos. The videos are free. They will help you understand what is written and they will also help you use the uh, descriptions that are in the book in a much more efficient and rapid manner. So the quicker you learn, the better, because then you can practice. And that is what astrology is all about. It's not just about learning, it's about practice. If you practice, you will become an astrologer. Just like a musician needs to practice to become a good musician. So anyway, the second book has to do with the transits, which is what I use here to uh, do this reading. So the transits allow one to um, forecast what may happen when such or such planet transits in this area of the person's chart. And if you ask a question, for example, about your life, whatever it is, a subject that is important to you, 
or when you visit our website and you do so because you have something that you want to ask, we will use the transits around your child to answer the question. And the results are usually, I would say, 90% very precise and very useful too, of course. Now, the third book I want to talk to you about is the book on karma. You know, karma, past incarnations, all right. We'd like to know who we were in a past incarnation. That is not what you're going to find in this book, of course. You're going to find what you are bringing back from this past incarnation and what you can do with it. This book is also linked to videos that you can watch uh, while you read the book uh, to help you understand quicker, better, uh, what is explained so that you can put it into practice once again. And of course, knowing that you went through such or such situations in your past, in your past incarnation will help you understand why in the present incarnation you behave in such or such manner that you are attracted or, or, or not by such or such people. That is very, very interesting. And we must also remember that more than the past incarnation, we are in this present incarnation to prepare the next one. Remember that. It's very important because in the next incarnation, you will not remember who you were in the present incarnation, but what you've done or not done will have extremely important repercussions because it will motivate what you are going to be in that next incarnation. Thank you very much for your interest in my work and for your attention until the end of this video. And I wish you very sincerely a happy and prosperous 2023. Bye for now.